for some uh, AI doom and gloom uh, for uh, Paul from Paul Smith Goodson. <laughs> All right, come on, come here, buddy. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep a high level levity here. Uh, yeah, well, the, the deal here is that uh, AI is a dirty little secret. I mean, technology people understand it, but the average person doesn't. But as these models grow and grow and grow and get bigger and bigger, there's a point where things happen inside that model uh, that creates uh, additional capabilities. And uh, these, these are called emergent behaviors. Uh, there's, there's good behavior and there's bad behavior. Uh, a lot of the um, good things that happen with uh, LLMs is that uh, uh, they're able to do multimodal, they can do arithmetic, they can answer questions, they can summarize things. I mean, these are all on a, a text-based, language-based machine. I mean, it, it just automatically, not automatically, but accidentally is capable of doing these things. So we have to uh, to watch out, you know, as we grow these things and, and get them bigger and bigger and we start getting towards AGI, we have to be be, care be careful of the uh, emergent behaviors that come out of this. Um, just the, the sheer volume of data and complexity allows the models to generalize uh, information from data in, in ways that they weren't programmed for or they're not anticipated for. These are really kind of accidental things that happen. So um, what we need to be worried about, not the good things, but the bad behaviors. And that's why they do a lot of testing on these. We, we have to worry about rogue AI. Um, and uh, one thing I think we really need to be careful of is when we start playing around with autonomous systems. Because if you get a, uh, system that's really close to being uh, AGI and it's autonomous, you imagine, and, and then if, if, they, if they somehow manage to uh, create curiosity, I think we're gonna be in big trouble. So uh, we just kind of have to watch out. They, uh, they did some experimentation with uh, an autonomous system, kind of a semi-autonomous system. They put a GP4, G GPT-4 model and they adapted it to, to, to browse the web and design um, a website and and uh, execute some chemistry experiments, all this stuff on its own. So we just have to be, be careful when we, when we start getting into autonomous uh, systems because they can do things that we don't know that they can do. And it takes a lot of, takes a lot of testing to uh, ensure that, uh, that they're safe. So Paul, uh, is there like, is the solution a kill switch? Uh, of, of of some sort of physical kill switch to unplug unplug things or uh, what are some of the things that are on the table you know we balance this hyper regulation with no regulation right the, the eu has put some stuff in play that it looks like you know seems onerous for startups that just means yeah. the big big companies just keep getting more powerful but mm -hmm. uh any any thoughts on on some solutions well, or, what, or, or, or what does being being careful mean? Yeah, it means right now they're doing like uh, they do a lot of rigorous testing, looking for uh, on new models. They look for for uh, bad behavior during training, and uh, it could be testing. Um, they test on different types of situations and using different data inputs, and they're, they're looking for unintended reactions. Uh, uh, they define they have like formal specifications and. They pretty closely outline what their core objectives are and what the constraints are. And the simpler these uh, constraints are, uh, the more easy it is to, uh, to test for them. Uh, they've also, they also do testing on cultural blind spots and you know for gender and religion and things like that. So they're doing a lot of testing. They've got, they do external audits by independent uh, evaluators. So. It, it seems to me that somebody, an organization, an analyst, um, a company could be really successful by putting together like a hitchhiker's guide to LLMs, right? In, in the enterprise, yeah. kind of a guide to this is how you, this is how you manage your environment. These are the things to do. These are the things to watch out for. Here's some mitigation potentially. 
it's like I, I see all of I, I hear all of this big talk from companies around the danger of and governance and like, you know, how we have to get this together. But I've, I've not seen a practical here are the hey, Mr. CIO, here are the 10 things that you should think about or, you know, in foundational things you should do before deploying AI in your environment. And I'm sure they're out there, but um, they haven't reached my uh, my eyes yet. Yeah, those are things that the uh, you know that the uh, researchers do when they're when they're developing these things. The thing is that you know it's so random. I mean, something bad could come out of that. So. But it's the challenge, though, Paul, those researchers they write in a way that is not easily consumed by practitioners, right? I mean, they write in a way where it goes over the heads of folks that are deploying these systems yeah. uh, many, many times. That's. Yeah. I, I think I think there were review processes and everything that they go through, the objectives and how yeah. they look at it. Um, I, th I think they do a good job of it. Um, I love it, guys. Great conversation uh, for sure. I'm uh, not smart enough to full, uh, fully understand full the risks. I do know we need to find a common ground with where we can innovate and startups can innovate and it's not dominated by the largest companies. So. Right. I've, got, I've got an article I'm writing on this right now, so ah, uh, I'm looking forward to it. 